Well, hello. Today is Saturday, December 30th, almost the end of the year, and it's time for our weekly meeting. And today it's about reflect and refresh. And we all need to do that. We all need to reflect and refresh. Um, it's the perfect time of year. Everybody, just about everybody, makes New Year's resolutions. That doesn't mean that everybody follows through with them, but um, you have to try. You just, you have to try. That's all I can say. <clears throat> Um, I ate so poorly last weekend. It was just ridiculous. I had pie, I had cake, I had cookies, I had ham. I ate, I ate too much. I ate way, way, way too much. <clears throat> I was bad Saturday. I was bad. Saturday was our Eve of Christmas Eve dinner with my family, my immediate family. I ate poorly. Um, Christmas Eve, ate poorly. Christmas Day, ate poorly. Uh, the day after Christmas, I went out to the Olive Garden, but I made smart choices. And Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I really stuck to my plan. I really thought I was going to have a gain this week, and I was going to be really upset with myself because my goal was to get through the holidays without a gain. And guess what? I lost 2.2. 2.2! I couldn't believe it. Which just goes to show, it's one meal, it's one day. In my case, it was three days. But I got right back on track. And I have uh, my own little star I put in there because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a star every time I've had a weight loss, like a small child. I like doing little things like that. But um, in the um, eight weeks since just before Thanksgiving, the, I, the 18th of November is when I started my plan of um, not having a weight gain over the holidays. Um, I didn't lose a lot of weight. I lost 5.6, I think it was, or 5.7. Um, over eight weeks. Not a huge, not a huge loss. I, I agree. But it was better than a gain. And it was, it just kept me on the right track of keep rolling on. So, um, what we want to do is reflect and refresh. So the quote that they gave us today at our meeting, which I really like is, the only time you should look back is to see how far you've come. I have lost since, la today's my one year anniversary of joining Weight Watchers. I joined, um, the 31st actually last year, but obviously the 31st is tomorrow, but it's to the Saturday, it's 52 weeks. So in 52 weeks, I lost 57.4. Little over a pound a week. Um, for my age, that's pretty good. And you know what? For any age, it's, it's better than gaining 57 pounds in a year. And the slower I'm going, the more I'm learning about myself. And so I think that it's gonna help me in the long run because I'm learning what I can eat and what I can't eat. Like I said, I had pie, cake, cookies. I had all of that stuff over the holidays, but I reined it back in. Um, instead of waiting until my meeting today to start again, because I, I knew I blew it. I just knew I blew it. But I thought, no, Christmas Sandy last year would have said, you know what, let's just wait till the first of the year and then we'll start. Um, well, speaking of the first of the year, the first of the year is on a Monday, so you don't have any excuses because everybody says, I'm going to start my diet on a Monday. I'm going to start my diet the first of the year. Well, the first of the year is a Monday, so you've got it all wrapped up in a nice little bow. So that's what you're going to do is you're going to start on Monday and uh, just get back on track. One meal at a time. Don't let one meal throw you off. In my case, it was three days. I was on a three-day binge and... Uh, I just had to rein it in, and I did. And I'm really proud of myself. I know I keep going on and on, but I'm really proud of myself. So let's go over the book first, since I get long-winded sometimes. And uh, we're going to reflect and refresh. And that's what we want to do this year. We want to reflect and refresh. And it says, looking back at your healthy living efforts over the past six months, two years, um, even five years. Uh, five years ago... I was just as heavy as I was last year. I mean, I was steadily putting it on. I wasn't losing weight. I was gaining weight every year. And what you want to do is uh, see, have other than year-end goals. Your on-the-scale goals were small victories, I know. But your big wins and what were your big challenges? My big challenge was not letting the old Sandy come back into my life. Um, she did over the weekend, the last three days. But you know what? I kicked her to the curb, and I got back on track. And that's what you want to do. You want to think about what you've accomplished, what made you proud, and what you still want to achieve. I want to achieve my 100-pound loss in 2018. My dream, my dream would be to reach my goal. I have my own personal goal of 175 pounds. I'm 5'9", although really I'm 5'8", because I'm shrinking as I get older. But uh, I think that, I think a perfect weight for me is between 150 and 165. 
So I think if I got down to 175, I'd be happy. I would love to get down to 150, but I don't know that I that's feasible for me. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. Definitely, definitely gonna be under 200 by the end of the year because that's my that is my ultimate goal is to get into Wonderland. But the end of the year is a natural point to reset your goals and healthy living strategies for the coming weeks and months with a clear focus and with a more flexible than ever program, which is now the freestyle program. Um, I really haven't met too many people that don't really like it. I have a difficult time when I'm really staying on track, uh, hitting my daily, my daily points because there's so many zero point foods. I'm not really, I do like a hamburger out and I do like a steak out, but I don't really make them at home that much. And I eat a lot of chicken, which is zero. I eat a lot of tuna, which is zero. I eat a lot of eggs, which are zero. So um, trying to, and the beans, I like beans. So it's it's hard. I did, I like fat, I like refried beans. And I found out that fat-free refried beans are zero. And I do like the taste of them. I was really surprised. So I think the regular refried beans are, don't quote me, but I think they're three or four points for half a cup. So I can eat them. That's You know, you're putting it on a taco or something anyhow with other kind of meats and stuff. So it kind of blends in. So what you want to do is look back on your experiences. Uh, and when you do that, it gives you important feedback of where you made your smart choices and where you made your difficult choices. And you have to consider what worked and what didn't work, either if it was food or your activity or even your mindset. Um, I've made some smart choices over the holidays. I've made some poor choices, but I've reined it in and got back right on track. And that's just what you got to do. You just can't let one day define you. Uh, because if you let two pounds, you feel bad, let you gain two pounds, two pounds is going to turn into five pounds, and then five pounds is going to gain it, turn into seven pounds, and then seven pounds is going to turn into ten pounds, and then you're just going to say, what the heck, I'm not even going to worry about it. And, and you don't want to do that. You want to grab it right away. You want to get right back on track. And you want to think about changes that you can make in your schedule and your habits so they work for you, not against you. Um, it's very difficult for me. Now, my schedule is when I get up in the morning to go for my walk. I go for a two-mile walk every day. Uh, it's been too bitter, too bitter cold. Uh, I, don't walk, I don't mind walking in the cold, but when the when it's below zero with the wind chill and it's windy, uh, I'm not going to walk. I also uh, don't walk if the, sh the sidewalks aren't shoveled, and we've gotten a lot of snow in the last couple weeks. Um, I wanted snow for Christmas, but it can stop now. I had my Christmas snow. I'm done. I'm done with it. So I'm going to have to think of a different way to get my exercise in. I don't live by a mall, so I can't be a mall walker. Um, I have occasionally gone up to the local Lowe's and walked up and down the aisles, but... Um, it's just, I got to figure out something. Uh, next week, not next week, but the following week, um, my water aerobics will start back up. So Bertie and I will still go back to that. So that'll work for us. And my food is the same. Uh, Jim works afternoons, and so it's not so hard because it's just me that I have to cook for. And, uh, and on the weekends, we're just pretty much... I always said when, when my kids were growing up, I cooked Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays when I got up in the morning, they could pick whatever they wanted for breakfast, and I would make whatever it was, you know, whether it was oatmeal or French toast or pancakes. It was like a restaurant. They could pick whatever they wanted, and I would cook, but then they were on their own for the rest of the day because that was a, a, a hodgepodge day. You, whatever you made, you made, and then on Sundays, we always went to my mother's for dinner, so I never had to cook on Sundays, so it's just... Uh, I've followed that mentality now. I Sundays, Christy, my daughter Christy and I go out to eat, and then on Saturdays, Jim and I just fend for ourselves. You think I would cook since I don't cook during the week, but I do cook on Thursdays for our family dinner, so I do cook one night a week for the whole family. Um, and what you want to do is let these goals that you're setting work for you, not against you. Don't set a goal that's way too high or way out of your reach or one you're not going to follow. Uh, anybody can say, well, I'm going to get up every day and I'm going to walk five miles, or I'm going to do a 3K once a week or once a month. Uh, are you going to really do it? No, no. Then you're going to set yourself up for failure. You're going to feel bad about yourself, and you're going to say, you know, I can't do it. I can't even keep a commitment. Just do a small commitment. You know, like just say, like, twice a week I'm going to walk around the block. You know, it may not seem like a lot, but it's better than just sitting down doing nothing. And you know that twice a week will lead to three or four times a week. And then before you know it, you'll, you'll be really enjoying it and you want to do it more. Uh, like I said, I'm just looking forward to the sidewalks 
getting cleared so I can go back walking. This is our last week of bitter cold. Uh, it's been below zero just about every day. And uh, I don't need to get frostbite. I don't need to get, I'm 67. I'm too old to be out in that cold. I really, I, I hate to say that I'm too old, but I am too old to be doing that. There's a lot of things I'm not too old to do, but walking in the cold is one of them. And I know that. And I'm going to leave this for you to, uh, maybe you can see it. I don't know, I can try to put it close enough. It's uh, little things that you're going to do to set your own goals. And it just, you know, you want to do your beyond the scale goals. And you want to write them down. Let's see if we got that down there. And um, just figure out what you want to do. You know, what, you, what your beyond the scale goal is, what you plan, how you plan to do it, how it went, what your next step is to, uh, to achieve it. So that's a pretty good thing. Now the Think Again page. I always like the Think Again page. Um, an unhelpful thought is, I'm never going to get to my goal. I have so much weight to lose. But the helpful goal is, I need to set small goals and focus on how far I've come this year. I, when I started this journey, weighed 304 and a half pounds. To say that I wanted to get down like another half, uh, to get down to 150, that's 154 pounds I have to lose. When you look at it for like 154 pounds, it's just unrealistic. It really is unrealistic. But if you think of 10-pound goals, when I was 304, my next goal was to get into the 90s. And when I got into the 90s, the 80s, the 80s and the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, the 40s, now my goal is to get into the 30s. Small little goals is what you have to do. Don't look at the far, far picture because that will sometimes really discourage you. Think of the 10 pounds to get into the next set of numbers. That's quite an achievement in itself. 10 pounds is quite an achievement. Uh, the unhelpful thought is, I tried to make more veggie-centric meals, but I just don't like them. That's never going to change. But the helpful thought is, I really don't like most vegetables, but I can still change the way I eat. I enjoyed the recipes I made with beans, so I'll focus on exploring them this year. I love vegetables, but I don't incorporate them in my foods that much. But you can always find some way to get around it. You really can. Um, I only like really like a hard-boiled egg or a scrambled egg or an omelet, which is mostly like a scrambled egg. So I won't be trying this recipe, but I bet you Weight Watchers with Carrie will because she eats a lot of eggs. It's egg and tomato and cheesy tomato sauce, I think it is. No, egg and spicy tomato sauce. So I don't know. We'll see. You're supposed to heat tomato sauce and pepper flakes in a small non-stick pan. Make a small indentation in the sauce, crack your egg, put it in, cook the egg for two to three minutes, and then put parsley, parsley and basil on top. Doesn't sound like something I would like, but. So, anyway, um, what she talked about is what you wanted to look back with pride at how far you've come. And what have you really done this year that you're proud of? It, it can be something really small, you know, like, oh, I gave up desserts, or um, one, meal a, one meal a week, I just just go crazy. But then I know that I can get right back on track. I know that's not really something to be proud of, but it is proud of the fact that even though you went crazy for that one meal, you got right back on track. So then that was a good thing. Um, think of your accomplishments, no matter how big or small. Uh, big if you lost a lot of weight. Small even if you lost a little bit of weight. Any amount of weight coming off is good for your heart. It's good for your body. It's good for your joints. It's just good for you all the way around. And then in your personal life, think of all you've accomplished. Um, I can do so much more now that I couldn't do before. And I never thought that my weight was holding me back because I always did what I wanted to do. But now I realize my weight was holding me back. But it's not going to do that anymore because I'm moving on. And you want to replace confidence and excitement with your present uh, happiness that you're having right now. And don't think of how happy you're going to be when you lose all the weight. Think of how happy you are as you're losing the weight. Anybody can say, well, you know, once I hit my goal, I'm going to be so happy. No, you just got to work at it. I'm happy now. I'm not at my goal. I'm not even really close to my goal, but I am so happy. And I'm so glad I went on this because it's it's something that you want to know that you're accomplishing. So this time of year, you want to really reflect and, I never remember, <laughs> reflect and refresh. Reflect on how well you've done. Reflect on how far you've come. And refresh your, your thoughts and saying, I'm going to do it for another year. I know I'm going to do this still. This is not a diet. This is a lifestyle. And this is a lifestyle I'm really going to stick with the rest of my life. I know that. I can go crazy like I did the last three days, get right back on track, and be perfect. So um, I will see you guys next week at our next meeting. And I hope you all have a happy new year. Be safe tomorrow night.